Hi there, this is Valentine and welcome to another Postman tutorial. This time I wanted to show you how you can use the Flickr API in Postman. And Flickr uses OAuth 1.0 and it's a bit trickier to get this to run in Postman. And nevertheless, OAuth 1.0 is a bit deprecated. It's not so used anymore, but some older applications still use it. So this is why I'm showing you how you can use it in Postman. So the first thing is to open the documentation for the Flickr API. You will find the link in the video description if you cannot find it. Let's get started by first creating an app. Now an app is what we need in order to get started using this API. So this is part of Flickr calls it the app garden. So I'm going to request an API key. This is non-commercial for me because I'm just doing this tutorial to show you how to work for it. If you want to build a commercial API, make sure that you register for a commercial key. Because I want to use this in Postman, I will simply select Postman and I'll type in here a description. I agree to the terms and conditions and hit the submit button. Now in this moment, I have here a key and a secret. And these are very important because this is how Flickr identifies the application that we're building. Of course, we're not building an application right now, but if we were building an application, this is the key and the secret that would identify your application. Going back here to the documentation, you see that OAuth has a flow and I think it's pretty well described here on how it goes. So it's practically a three step process in order to access any information that is protected. So let's see what we need to do. The first step is to get the request token. It's explained here, get a request token. We have to send some parameters, then Flickr will send us back the request token. So let's see how we can get this to run in Postman. So the address where we're sending this request is this one. So I'm gonna copy it. You will see at the end it says request underscore token. In Postman, I will open up a new tab, paste this here, make sure that we don't have any new lines. And right in the beginning, I'm gonna do the following. I'm gonna go here at the environments. I'm gonna add the new environment. I'm gonna call this Flickr. And these two values here, I'm gonna put them into two separate Postman variables. So this will be the consumer key. And the next one will be the consumer secret. Okay, I'm gonna add them. Next, I'm gonna go to the authorization tab. And from the list, I'm gonna select OAuth 1.0. The first value that we're going to populate is the consumer key and the consumer secret. I'm going to use the environment variables that we have just entered. Just make sure to select the environment, of course. The autocomplete will kick on. So consumer key, consumer secret. So let's look at the advanced values that we have here. We must ensure that this is the signature method that we're using, HMAC SHA1, and the version will be 1.0. So let's go ahead and submit this request and see what happens. We're going to get here an error back, 400 bad requests. This means that we still need to submit some data. This is the OAuth callback. This is where the user will be sent after he or she confirms that it gives access to your application. So we need to provide this in our request as well. Postman unfortunately doesn't offer this field, so we need to manually go to params. And you will see here that already Postman has pre-populated a lot of fields that we need, but this one needs to be here. And we are going to use simply example.com. This is absolutely enough for this case. As you can see, the information changes and Postman will add this OAuth signature. And this is something that's automatically calculated. And this is where actually the power of Postman comes into play. So let's submit this request again. Sometimes it's working, sometimes it's not working. Let's try it again. Okay, now we get a status 200. What happens here is we get this response and the response contains an auth token and an auth token secret. We will need these in the next request. What happened here is we are here at this step. We have sent a request for the request token and back we got three parameters, the auth token, the auth token secret and the auth token callback confirmed. This is just a Boolean true false. And what we need to do with this is to redirect the user to the next page, which is for the authorization. 
let's simply go ahead, create a new collection. I'm going to call it Flickr. I'm going to save this step here. It will be one request token. I'm going to select the Flickr collection. Perfect. So the next step is step number two. So for step number two, we need to send the user to this address. And additionally, we need to provide another parameter. This is the auth token parameter. I'm going to go here to query params, paste this here. And actually, the auth token is what we got from the response, this value here. I'm going to simply put it here. Now, unfortunately, I cannot run this request in Postman. But of course, I can run it. But if I go to preview, it will tell me that Postman doesn't have the JavaScript enabled, and for that reason, doesn't it cannot work. I'm going to simply copy this URL, go into browser, and open up a new tab. This tab, I'm going to paste this. And since I'm already logged into my Flickr account, I'm just going to be asked if I allow Postman to access my Flickr account. This, of course, has absolutely no relationship if I find the same person who created the application or if it's another person. What happens next is will tell me what Postman is then authorized to do and what not. And of course, I will click yes or authorize it. And what happens next is that I get this information back in the URL. So this is the callback URL. This is when the user is then redirected to the app. And the app becomes this additional information. The auth token has remained the same, but the auth verifier is a different value. And this is something that we will need very, very soon in the next step. So that's the next step. We are going to exchange the request token for an access token. I know it is a very long and complicated process, but just, just hang on. So this was the second request. Say this is allow access. I'm going to close it because we don't need it anymore. I'm going to open your tab, paste this new address with the access token. So this is different from the request token, of course. So this is a different request altogether. I'm going to go to authorization, auth1. Unfortunately, some information has already been populated here. We are going to do the following. We are going to get this information from the first request that came back. I'm going to copy it again. I'm going to put it here in the access token and the OAuth token secret from here. I'm going to put it in the token secret. Additionally, we need provide another parameter, which again, Postman unfortunately doesn't offer. So let's submit this. And I'm going to tell us that verifier invalid. So we need to add a verifier field. The verifier is this one auth verifier. So again, going to the params, auth verifier. And as you remember, we got the verifier here in the callback. So I'm going to simply copy this, put it in Postman and send this request again. Now we have managed to get the new token, the new auth token and the new secret. This is the new token and this is the new secret. Okay. So this has been the third request, get access token. Don't worry, I will provide you in the description with this collection so that you don't have to do everything manually. So let's follow along with the documentation. Now we should actually start by making a call and this is one of the endpoints that we can call and we are going to add some variables so this is one of the endpoints that we can call i'm going to copy the address open up a new tab you'll notice here that there are some parameters that we're sending here so for example no json callback this will have the value of one format will be json and additionally, I'm going to use this method. OK. Now, again, I'm going to go to the authorization, select auth1. And this time, we're going to use the access token and the secret that we got from the third request. So copy this. We'll see that it's a different value. The same goes for the secret. Submit the request. Fortunately, it's 200. And here we can see my profile information. 
it's not much. It's just showing that the auth one authentication and authorization has been successful. And this would be the fourth step. Let's call it get data. So what I don't really like about this request is that they all have a lot of parameters and a lot of things that need to change. And for that reason, I wanted to make it a bit more dynamic and to reduce the chances of making any errors. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is to parse the response body from the first request. The format that's being used here is the same that is used for query parameters. I'm going to use a Postman library to parse this response and to set some Postman variables. So I'm going to go in the first request to the test. I'm going to define a variable called collection. I'm going to require a library called Postman collection. And I'm going to define a new variable called params. And this will use another object, which is called collection query param dot parse. And we are going to parse this string. So in order to access this string here, I'm going to use pm.response.text. I'm going to open up the Postman console. I'm going to clear everything that's inside. Run this request. Just a second to lock this information as well. So what we're getting here is, okay, this is an off problem, but you can see that it's getting back all the information so we can easily access it from here. So now it has been successful. What we're interested in is the first and the second values. So we're going to set two Postman variables, auth token and auth token secret. So this will be environment variables. I'm going to select this. Will be the all token. And we can easily get the value from the params. Will be params. This will be the second parameter. So this is the key number zero, key number one. And we're gonna get a property value. Same procedure for the next one. This will be the all token secret. And this will be the key number two. And again, we're getting the value. So let's retry this. Sometimes it works. The second time it works. Okay. So now if we inspect the environment, we'll be able to see that we have now additional values here, the auth token and the auth token secret. So where we are using the auth token, we are using the auth token here. Of course, this will not change anything. We still need to get the actual address that has been sent out by Postman. But nevertheless, Let's try it like this. So the address is this one here. You simply copy it. Go to the browser. Paste this. The same information. I'll authorize it. But we're interested next in saving the auth verifier. Fortunately, we have to do this manually. So I'm going to go inside the collection. Inside the environment, excuse me. I'm going to create here. A variable called auth verifier. Put a value that we had. I'm gonna update this. We are done with the first and second request. I'm gonna go to the third request. As you can see, we can directly update here the auth verifier. But just as well, we'll have to set here the access token. Would be the auth token. And auth token secret. So when we submit this request, it will be successful as well. And again, we'll have to parse some information from here. So we're going to use the exact same approach as we've used here. So we'll simply copy paste in the code. And actually, what we're going to do is we are going to override these variables. Now we can notice that the auth token is again. The first one, the first key, this is the second key. So as it stands, it should work. So let's see if this is actually the case. Okay, so we have to restart the entire process because the token has been used. If 
but we can replace this here as well. Now we should have an entire flow. So let's try it out from the beginning to understand what's going on. So first of all, we are sending a request for getting the token. I don't know why this is failing the first time, but it's always working the second time. Now we have updated the environment variable. So if you can check against them, you will see here that the auth token and the auth token secret, they should be exactly the same as the ones from the response. Again, if we're looking at this allow access request, we can inspect the request which has been sent here in the background. I'm going to simply copy the address from here. I'm going to take it again in the browser, paste it. We'll authorize the application. And again, we're going to get the auth verifier back. So with auth verifier, again, we're going at the environment and we are updating the value here. And this means we can go to the third request this time. Submit this one as well. I'm going to get 200. And we have also replaced the token and the secret. So then we can go to the fourth request. Submit this as well. I'm going to get the 200. And who? Everything worked. Super complicated. There's anything that you, any parameter or anything that you enter wrongly will render this not to work. So this is why I wanted to show you step by step. I know there are a lot of steps. I know that this is confusing. It's trust me, it's just as confusing for me as it is for you. OAuth is not easy. There are so many terms and so many things that need to work together. Fortunately for this Flickr API, everything seems to work now. Thank you for watching this long tutorial. I hope it wasn't too boring and that you have learned something new and it managed to help you do this in your own project. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel for more tutorials like this. And see you next time at another tutorial. Don't forget to check the video description because there you will find this Postman collection. And all you need to do is to generate your own consumer key and secret. And you can start playing around with this. Finally, a question that sometimes comes regarding OAuth. And this is understandable. How can I automate this entire process in Postman? And the thing is, you, you cannot automate it. So you cannot automate the step where the user actually clicks. Not from Postman, you need to look at other ways on how you can automate if you need to test a scenario like this one. But from Postman, you have to do it manually as I've shown you. Again, thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.